probably no more famous beet-centric dish than borscht. And it's definitely one of our favorite ways to cook with beets over the winter or really any time of year. Borscht is such a great stew. It's hearty, tangy, satisfying, earthy, all while not feeling heavy at all. And it's a great way to use up all of these really storage-friendly root crops like potatoes, carrots, and of course, beets. So we're making ours with some venison. These are just what we call stew meat, just different cuts that we've put together that are good for stewing. You could absolutely make borscht vegetarian and it's still delicious. I would just up the ante with the other vegetables, add a little bit more of them to make up for it. But first what we're gonna do is get these sauteing and searing in a pan to build up some flavor on them and then get the rest of the vegetables going. I'm gonna put the venison in first. There's just some butter on you know medium high heat in our pot here and just let it get a nice golden brown color on all sides. So I'll flip it around a little bit. So it doesn't take long. Once you see a nice golden brown color on one side, just flip them all over so the other side gets nice and caramelized as well. And you could absolutely do a larger roast here that's not pre-cut up and then just pull it out later on and chop it up and put it back in. This is just a little faster to have it pre-cut like this. But anyway, once you have all this nice color on them, I'm gonna go ahead and add some onions, get them browning, and also some garlic. And we're just gonna let these go until the onions start to get nice and lightly golden brown. Okay, now that these have a nice color, you can see there's lots of browning happening on the bottom of the pan, but don't worry, we're gonna get all that up before it burns. First, I'm gonna put in just a little bit of tomato paste. And then some kind of acidic thing, you could use sherry. We're actually gonna use some of our homemade wine, which I think will be delicious, and just pour that in to deglaze the pan. So you wanna pour it in, it's gonna bubble up, and then just move the spatula all around to get up all those nice brown bits of flavor at the bottom smells amazing right now. <laughs> so once we've kind of incorporated all of that nice caramelization from the bottom of the pot, it's time to add our stock. We have some venison stock. Um, obviously, again, if you're doing vegetarian, vegetable stock is fine, or you could do beef and beef stock. That would also work really well. So I'm just gonna pour that in. And I'm just gonna have this going at a simmer while I prep my vegetables. While the venison and the stock are cooking, we're going to get our vegetables roasting in the oven. This will again just make the whole thing come together much more quickly and get some nice color on the outside of our vegetables, which makes them extra delicious. So we've got carrots, potatoes, and of course, beets. These beets, it's kind of up to you whether you need to peel them. Usually if they're like really fresh right out of the ground, they don't need it. But these have been in storage for a while and you can kind of see on the edges that the Outside is just a little tougher than the rest of the beet, so I am gonna go ahead and peel these. Now that the beets are all peeled, I'm just gonna chop all of the veggies into about inch, inch and a half size cubes. Now I'm just gonna take this beautiful pile of chopped veggies and spread them out on a sheet pan that just has a little oil on it. And I'm gonna put them in the oven at about 400 and just roast them until they get tender. Watch out, Mumu. It's been about 20 minutes and these are looking nice and roasty. So I'm gonna take them out and check on our meat and stock. And I'm just gonna grab one of the little pieces out and make sure it's tender, but I would imagine it is. It's been a while. Oh yeah, so that's nice and cooked through. So now we're gonna add all the veggies to the pot. And so with all of the veggies that we had roasting that we added into our meat, we're going to add some dill. This is the main herbaceous flavoring of borscht. So we're gonna use lots of this nice dill. And we're also going to add some cabbage. 
Um, we're doing it in the form of sauerkraut. That's a nice way to use cabbage and it has that really tangy flavor. You could also just chop up some fresh cabbage and throw that in there as well. Now that I've stirred in those beets and other veggies, you can see the beets are already turning the borscht this beautiful, rich, red, maroon color. And I'm just going to let this simmer again for about 15 minutes so that everybody can get to know each other a little in the pot. So our borscht has been simmering for about 15 minutes. It's looking lush and pink and beautiful. And right now it's ready to serve. This is really great right now, but it'll be even better the next day when you reheat it and everybody's mingled even more. But I like to serve it up with a dollop of either sour cream or yogurt or something like that. Oh, it's just so pretty. And some fresh dill. And there you have it. This soup is just like comfort in a bowl to me, especially with a slice of crusty bread on the side. And I would probably grow beets just to make this, but they're also a very versatile and delicious plant, easy to grow and they store forever. So a great addition to any garden. Mm -hmm.